Welcome to Conversations Live. For more than a decade, we've brought you the best in books, entertainment, celebrity interviews, and current events. When the movers and shakers of the world have something to say to you, they say it to us first. Here's your host, Cyrus Webb. And welcome back, everyone, to Conversations Live. I'm your host, Cyrus Webb. Glad you all could join us once again, both for our radio audience here in Mississippi at WYAD 94.1 FM and WYADonline.com. We're glad that you all could be with us. Also, it's tuning in to our friends at iHeartRadio and Amazon Music Podcast. We're glad you all could be with us as well. We're excited to welcome back travel expert and also author Joe Yogers to our program. We had a great chat with him uh, not too long ago about the book 100 Drives and 5,000 Ideas. He's back to talk to us about the new book from National Geo. 50 States, 500 Campgrounds, Where to Go, When to Go, What to See, and What to Do. I want to talk to Joe not only about compiling this book, but also Mississippi. We have about four pages in there as well, which I'm excited about. Joe, thank you so much again for the time. Really appreciate it. Sure, Cyrus. Thanks for having me again. Well, we had a lot, a lot of fun speaking last time, and now that people are moving around, uh, Joe, they are looking to be able to get out of the house and to be able to spend some time out in the world. I mean, what has it been like for you already to see the response to the new book? Well, it's been pretty good so far. Um, more people are camping, and yeah. uh, they're interested in places they can go and set up a tent or park their RV or crawl into a nice, comfy glamping tent. So, yeah, it's been great so far. And, Joe, you get to take what is your love of travel and be able to share that with all of us. I mentioned when you and I last spoke was with the book 100 Drives, 5,000 Ideas. I love the fact that with these books from National Geographic, they give us these ideas of not only where we can go, but also what to expect. Do you think that's what made these books so popular? I, I think so. I mean, they're they're not detailed guidebooks. You have to you know get a local guide for that. Mm-hmm. They're really idea books to sit and think look at all these places, where do I really want to go, and these are the choices I have. So I think it's, they're really books that, for the first stage of planning, that, you, you know, you feel like you need to go somewhere, and you have a vague idea of a state or a region, and this zeroes in on places that you can spend your time. Yeah. And, and as we would expect from National Geographic, Joe, the, uh, I mean, the, the photos are extraordinary. I mean, what was that like for you to marry the information with these great images? Well, I have to thank the photo editors in Washington, D.C. for that. And all of the hundreds of photographers who have snapshots for Nat Geo over the years. Um, they have millions of amazing images in their photo archives in D.C. and um, and so many amazing photographers to draw from, some of whom I've had a chance, to, the pleasure to travel with on the road. But uh, I never worry about the images for these books because <laughs> I know they'll do an amazing job. Yeah. And, you know, I think the other thing is that I appreciate about, well, I, I think we saw it in 100 Drives, 5,000 Ideas as well, Joe, but in 50 States, 500 Campgrounds, it, as it even says literally in the book, it shouldn't have to be said. But as you're visiting these places, taking the care of them, making sure that now, of course, we're cleaning up after ourselves, but making sure that we're leaving them better even than we found them. What have those little tips been like for you to make sure that people remember? Because a lot of times we do just think about, you know, getting out there, having a good time. We don't think about the impact we're having on the places we're going. Why has that been so important to share? Well, it's important because more people are are, are camping and using parks, and I know that um, during the first summer of COVID, when people were just flooding the parks, there were a lot of problems with uh, first-time visitors who didn't know kind of the unwritten and sometimes written rules of how to behave. You know, you leave things better than what you found them, and yeah. uh, you pack out your trash, and you don't leave graffiti on famous landmarks and things like that, and you don't feed the wildlife. Um, so there are so many new people going to parks uh, and camping that I think it's important that they have to be reminded much as you know we were growing up with other things you know smoky the bear and don't don't start a forest fire right and right and um the old ads about uh, not not littering um and um so I think people have to be re- a whole new generation of campers kind of has to be reminded by their elders so to speak right <laughs> and uh that there are these unwritten and written rules of how to behave when you're camping and visiting parks and wilderness areas. 
And this is something that you have come about earnestly, Joe. You even share in the book um, that even your parents instilled within the, within you the love of camping. I mean, what is it about camping you think has really stayed with you? I mean, you, you talk about that in the book, but also being a part of, of course, the, the Boy Scouts even and, and the impact of that. What is it about the outdoors that has really impacted you, do you think? Well, I you know, my parents took me camping when I was a kid. One of my earliest memories, I think I was four years old, was – staying in this old army surplus tent in Yosemite Valley and waking up and there's a bear wandering through the campsite. And I think as a four-year-old, you just uh, this is just ingrained on your brain. Um, and I had this amazing, amazing camp, you know, camping experiences in the Boy Scouts. Um, my first ever canoe camping experience was going down the Colorado River with the Boy Scouts, during which I got the worst sunburn of my entire life, <laughs> but but I still remember it fondly, and I ended up taking my own kids on canoe camping down the same route um, when they were about the same age as I did it, um, a couple times actually, with some other some other parents from where I live. Um, so it's, you know, you grew up with that, and you kind of want to pass it on to your own children, which I've done. And now they're out on their own, and they're very avid campers doing their own thing. Campers and glampers, I have to say, because they do like the comfy glamping tents, too, once in a while. Um, and it's it's just it becomes a family tradition, I think, with a lot of people. Um, and I've, uh, I don't know, it's it's a good question. What what draws me to the wilderness? Um, this, you know, I've always been kind of a loner, and it's a place to go to be by yourself. Yeah. Um, I think we would have had a, a different experience, uh, Joe, if I had seen the bear. I don't know if I would have continued to go out. <laughs> you know, well, but, you know, but I, I yeah. I'll tell you a story about that. Yeah. Um, doing the doing the parks book, I was in the Everglades. Actually, I was in Key Largo, um, down in the Florida Keys, and I did a kayak trip with uh, with my wife through the mangroves and. Um, we had two single kayaks, and we were in this lagoon, and all of a sudden this big gray figure raises up out of the water, and it's, a, it's, a, it's an alligator. And my reaction is to paddle towards it. My <laughs> wife's reaction is to turn around and paddle away as soon as possible. <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, look, I, I think I think there's definitely in this world, uh, there, both groups will be recognized. And, and I think that's what makes these things so interesting, The of course, the – the stories like that that you're able to share, uh, Joe, but also I think the the wonders right in front of us. I mentioned my home state of Mississippi is in this book, as of course you would expect because it you know it's, it's in this country. Um, I would want our audience to make a note of pages 149 to 151. And the reason I'm, I wanted to bring this up and the way that the book is categorized is not only of course do we get the highlights of each state, like what our state flower is or state bird, but also what I thought, my, thought to myself, Joe, and I was prepping for this segment. I didn't even know about some of these places in, in, in my own state. Is that something you're also finding that people are finding out about these hidden treasures literally in their backyard? Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, and I'm finding out as, uh, about them as I'm doing this book. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, yeah, I mean, there's there's 10,000 state parks in the U.S., and, and I find that there's probably a state park or two with camping and really cool things to do within an hour drive of almost where anybody lives in the entire country. So you don't have to be close to a national park. You've got these amazing state parks. There are national forests like like you have in Mississippi, um, and uh, even local you know campsites, um, and, and even urban campsites. You know, there's a couple in Mississippi like Easy Days RV Park, which is way up in what I would call the suburbs of Memphis, but it's over the state line. And if you want to you know visit Beale Street and all that kind of stuff. And you have your RV, or you want to pitch a tent, you can stay at Easy Days, and yeah. um, so it's it's you know it's it's a great variety of different things that you can discover in a given state, and Mississippi has a lot of them. For sure, and that's why we're so glad to have this book. Joe, so glad to have you back again. Travel expert and author Joe Yogurt has been our guest again. The new book from National Geographic is 50 States, 500 Campgrounds, Where to Go, When to Go, What to See, What to Do. A perfect book for those looking to get out there and enjoy the world around them. It's available through our friends at Amazon.com or through your favorite local bookstore. And, Joe, how can they stay connected with you? Well, uh, www.joeyogurts.com. Or my author's page on Amazon Books, uh, which lists all of my Nat Geo books and my novels and everything else up there. So, All right. 
But, Joe, again, appreciate the time and looking forward to speaking with you again. All right. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. And we thank your audience for tuning in to another great segment of Conversations Live. Until next time, I'm your host, Cyrus Webb, saying, as always, enjoy your day, enjoy your life, enjoy your world. Thank you all for choosing Conversations Live. Now, let's go make today amazing. Take care.